יישא אדוני פניו אליך שלום. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Yes, amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. You know, when I first started doing praise and worship, I'd bound up here maybe two steps at a time. And now it's like, well, start without me. <laughs> you know, I'm a little slower now, Billy. I don't know what happened, but it just... <laughs> okay. Now, I know that you're looking around and wondering why there's not very many people here today. Well, we told the riffraff that we were canceling service because we wanted y'all all to our city. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to hog you. We're just going to hog you. I'm not into numbers. Okay. Now let's let's get serious. I haven't been here in a while. And, you know, I read the I do read the Bible. And I found something the other day that I wanted to share with you. So get your Bibles out, everybody. This is important. It's important. And Doris is back. Yay! She was back last week. Oh, yeah. Well, I hadn't been here in a month. No, you didn't get permission for both. Okay. Well, I didn't mean to miss last week. It was for COVID. Okay. Everybody got your Bibles? Okay. Turn to Luke 5. Now, in this chapter, Jesus is talking about wine and wineskins and all this stuff. And he made a statement. Now, my Bible is in the New King James, so it may not read quite the same. But he makes a statement here, and I'm going to use this from now on. And I don't care if I'm taking it out of context. I don't care if I'm using it for something different than what it was for. So the next time you're with younger people and they start telling you how wonderful it is to be strong and healthy and that you're old and can't do anything, you know, my, my middle son tells me, oh, Mom, you got to take care of yourself. You know, you can fall and break a hip now. You know, your knees, they're not what they used to be, Mom. You know, all this, and then he asked me, to help him unload a king-size mattress. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it's like, okay, when do you want me to take care of myself? All right. But they make all these derogatory remarks about us getting older. Well, I've got more energy now than I had years ago because I'm taking better care of myself. But listen to what Jesus says in Luke 5, 39, the last sentence, the old is better. <laughs> so it can be talking, but can, I don't care if you're talking about wine skins, Billy. Yeah. The next time, time my kids tell me that I could break a hip, look, older hips are better. Yeah, older hips are better. The older is better, dude. Jesus said it. So yeah. write that down. I, I don't care if you get anything else out of today. I feel like that was... That's it. That's it. That's the word for the day. Older is better. Older is better. Yes, I remember that. Okay. And they said, where did you get that? Say, well, he was talking about wine skin. Say, it's the word. It's the word. Okay. That's all. God is so good. It's like, you read that when you just feel like garbage. <laughs> Thank you, God. The older is better. Well, he does. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. We love you, Lord.
says that praise looks good to the upright. Right. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Our mascot, baby. Amen. Yeah. Well, in our church bulletin, Sister Karen wanted to say thank you to everybody that's been such an encouragement for her. Uh, you know, she's still going through stuff with this chemo. It affects her, affects her body. But she's going through it, and the Lord's going through it with her. Yes. Yeah. Amen. 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 And uh, she said that, you know, she would like to have some fellowship. She would like to have a Bible study in her home. But the only, only thing is she wants to be to take precautions that uh, if you're going to be around her, she wants to make sure that you have the COVID shots, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that because she's susceptible to that kind of stuff at this stage in her life. But that's going to change, right? Yes. Yeah. She's going to come out stronger than she went in. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, we had a, a testimony last Sunday of how someone uh, has some physical problems in their body and they spoke to it. And they learned that they have authority in the name of Jesus. You know, the Bible says that God has given us authority over all the power of the enemy. Amen. We just got to use it. That's right. Amen. 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 And we want to receive our tithes this morning. We'll receive an offering later on. Uh, and I've got a, uh, two scriptures here, both in the same chapter, Hebrews chapter 11. You know, we call that the faith chapter. And in verse 32, it says, And what more could I say to convince you? There is not enough to time to tell you of the faith of Gideon, I'm reading out Passion Translation. Barak, Samson, Jethan, David, Samuel, and the prophets. Verse 33. Through faith's power, they conquered kingdoms and established true justice. Their faith fastened onto their promises and pulled them into reality. See, God has given us a lot of promises in his word. Yes. And there's quite a bit of promises on finances. Yes. Amen? Mm -hmm. And it's because you have faith that it'll pull into the reality, into your world. Mm -hmm. Amen? But you have to use your faith. And when you give, you have to use your faith to do, just give. That's right. Amen? I mean, if you look at it from the natural point of God uh, of the world, you would say, "I'm going to put my money in here. I'm losing now yeah. because you you put your money in. There. That's not what God said. He said, when you put it in there, you're going to get back more than what you started with. Yeah. That's a promise of God. Yeah. But it takes faith. Amen. Amen. You got to trust God's word." That what he says is going to happen, it's going to happen. Yes. I can't do it for you. Pastor can't do it for you. It's something you have to receive for yourself and say, I want to trust God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as we get your tithes and offers, if you'll hold them up before the Lord, if you haven't made out your check, $1,000 will do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Danny, can I say something about our pasture while we're getting the high? Is it good? No. Yes, it is. Okay. It's got to be good if it's about our pasture, right? Yes. <laughs> On behalf of all of us here, we want to thank you for everything that you've done for us yes. and that you, you just hold us together. Yes. You are a blessing to yes, us. Yes. I know I've got to keep it up here, though. You have been a blessing, yes. and we are so proud and glad that we came to this church. Yes. Amen. You just, you just ooze blessing over us. <laughs> you just ooze us. Yeah. 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 Thank you, my giver. I mean, I love you. Love you. Thank you. <laughs> Crystal's got the spunk. Mom's got the ooze. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Okay, so if you got your tithes ready, just hold them up before the Lord. And let's just pray together. Father, I thank you that I have faith 
to do your word. To do your word. And because of that faith, and because of that faith, I receive your promise. I receive your in promise. Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. And our mascot is here. Well, we just, I thought. Connie's already slain in the spirit, Billy. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Let's just worship the Lord. Yes. Get our hearts ready to receive the word. Amen. Yes.
Now the Lord wants to speak to us. Yes. And I don't know who he's going to use. Use Lou or whoever. Somebody. So your boy show the whole name. Me boy show boy, me he so. La ma si ti, lo boy she te. La ma si to boy, she me he. Lo boy si ti he, la ma si ti he so. La ba, ne ne, ho ho, ne sa. Your experiences with me are going to be greater in the future because you're going to need greater anointing yeah. and greater presence and greater power in your life. <laughs> I tell you, the things that you see around you right now, you're going to have to come up to a higher level to withstand what the enemy has planned for you. But I tell you, I tell you that there is a place for you to walk where instantaneously you can grab hold of my power, my might, my anointing and walk through Everything that comes against you, you will be able to withstand the enemy. You'll be able to repel him in government. You'll be able to repel him out of your families. But I tell you, it's your choice. You either walk in power or be defeated, but it's your choice. And I say, I am willing to allow you to come up high. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. what God's doing here. Praise you know, Lord God's Jesus. moving by spirit. But from the first time, I had introductions and all this I was going to say, but Ron, come on up. Bring my, please bring my glasses and that. I, you know, I, as my father used to say, let's just wait yeah. and see what the Holy Ghost wants to do. Yeah. What the Lord wants to do. He has a word here especially for you. And we just heard the beginning of it right there. Praise God. Bless God. I tell you what. From the time we entered the door and this young man right here greeted us with good morning. Yeah. Until the time we came in here and when the shofar blew I felt him enter this place. Amen. He's here because you're here. Amen. He's here because we're here to worship him and to bring glory and honor to him. So Amen. I don't want to miss what God's doing today. I don't want to miss what he has to say to us. God's got so much. We've already been so blessed, Pastor Glenel. We could just go home right now yes. and, and just have all of our needs yes. just met. Yes. And you know what? This is a precious group of people. Don't yes. ever forget that. God has his hand on this place. God has his hand upon this pastor. Yes. God has his hand upon each and every one of you yes. this morning. Yes. And listen, let me tell you what. God's about to pour out his spirit when we learn to yield to his spirit. When we learn to yield to him and what he has yes. for us. God will pour out his spirit. It is not about man's agenda. It's not about what we have to say. It's about what he has to say to you today. He's showing the whole Praise God. Lord, I just wor we worship you. We worship you. We thank you for the moving of your spirit. Lord, you have walked into this building, Father God. You are abiding in this place this morning. Your spirit, Father God, is so thick here this morning in Mena, Arkansas at Covenant Life Church. Your spirit is here moving in a great and a mighty way. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do. Thank you, Father, that this body has not become weary in well-doing. And so, Father God, they will reap, Father God, your blessings. They will reap all those things, God, that you've shown Pastor Glenell and our, our precious Brother Fred, Father, all these years that you sent them here, Father, they're about to reap because they've been faithful, Father God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Lord, you have sent people here, Father, to hold up our arms, Father God, to be a blessing, Father, to be supportive to this church. And God, we give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it in Jesus' name. I mean, the Spirit of God is up here so strong. I'm, I'm just... It's all over here so strong. I'm telling you, it's oozing. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's oozing. I like that. She said it's oozing. The Spirit yeah. of God is oozing here this morning. I want to ask my precious husband to come up. And I also want to introduce some friends of ours that came from Arkadelphia uh, to be with us this morning. And I've been wanting them to come here and to meet Pastor uh, Glenelg. So, Rebecca and Danny Bean, would you stand up and just... 
Greet the people. Yes, and listen, they have a miracle in their life too. Do you know there are several miracles sitting here in this building today? We're not the only one with a miracle. We're just going to share ours with you. But Pastor Glenelg is a miracle herself. Uh, this church is a miracle. There are people sitting here right now that are miracles. And there are those of you here today that are going to receive your miracle. How about that? How about that? So uh, I'm going to. Turn it over to my husband right now. This is Ron Carroll. This is my better half. <laughs> and uh, he's going to share a minute with you, and then I'll take it back. Mm -hmm. You want to yeah. get right here? Yeah. Isn't God good? Amen. Yeah. 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 And he's so, so, so good. It's hard for us to explain and think about how good he is. All of us realize and have heard over and over about God being good. But when we begin to experience his goodness, then it gets personal to us, doesn't it? Yes. I mean, it's really real. I remember years ago, I was in Costa Rica ministering there. And uh, after we got finished preaching and all, then there was a lady came up that wanted healing in her body. And uh, she insisted that I lay my hand on her stomach. And uh, usually, as a man, I don't lay my hand actually on another lady. I stuck it on her stomach, but she insisted. So I put on her stomach, and she began to tell me that she had need of healing. And of course, as I touched her stomach, I felt that tumor there. It was very protruding out of her body, and uh, I uh, began to pray for her. And as I was praying for her, I just felt that tumor disappear. Yeah, I did. It just began to disappear. Praise God. And I've always known. How God is able to do great and mighty things. I've always known that He was leading me, guiding me throughout my life. As I was a young man, about eight or nine, ten years old, mother always insisted that my older brother and myself get up and go to church. Uh, they didn't go to church on Sunday mornings, but we were always close enough to a Baptist church that we could walk. And uh, I determined in my spirit that I was not going to serve God as. At growing up, I decided I was going to be a little rascal. <laughs> I wanted to be a rascal. I wanted to be mean and hateful. And I couldn't really see what God was wanting to do in my life. But even at an early age, he was ordering my steps. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Ordering my steps. Yes. As I was getting ready to finish high school, I had always been working with Dad as a carpenter, and I felt like I was going to go to a structural drafting school. I'd already sent my, my high school papers and all to a structural drafting school to enter into the uh, location of work. But right before I was to go, then the Lord directed me to go to Bible school, and I just went right on to Bible school. I mean, just oh, out of the blue, uh, a direction that he had ordered my steps to go. So we began to go in that direction and follow out what, what God was wanting to say and what he's wanting to do. Our steps are ordered of the Lord is what I'm saying to you. Yes, they are. Your steps this morning are ordered of the Lord. Yes. He's so faithful to us. Yes, he is. He's so good. Amen. He's so present to us. Yes, yes. Ever present help in the time of our need. In Romans the 8th chapter it says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. During, during quite a few funerals, we always talk about our bodies being quickened, our bodies being quickened. But here in this verse of scripture, what I want to present to you today in Romans 8, chapter 11, verse that God is quickening our bodies even while we're alive. Amen. While you're alive, he quickens us. And that's yes. what I was talking about to you earlier in the beginning, how that he is able to direct our footsteps. Yes, he is. Our footsteps are ordered the Lord. Yes. I've been able to see him throughout my early childhood as I went into being a teenager back in 1964, 65, receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, giving my heart to the Lord, serving Him at that time and continuing to serve Him 
ever since then throughout our lives. Uh, God's been good. But there's been areas and times of our lives that seemed like we were in a distant place away from God. But our footsteps are ordered to the Lord every day. I mean, there's times that we feel like that we are distant from what God's wanting to say and what he's wanting to do in our life, but he's ever present here. Yes, he is. He's very present to you here today. Yes, if you're in need of a miracle today, I'm presenting to you that there is a miracle working God. Yes, amen. I mean, I've never seen him definitely visibly provide a miracle in my life throughout my entire life in the construction business and pastoring and ministering and all those kind of things. I saw many miracles around me, but I tell you, in the last few months, I've been able to see a literal miracle in my own personal body. Billy's going to share about the steps that God carried me through that miracle because so much of the time I was not alert enough to even know what was happening. So she's going to reveal and share that to you in a minute. But these verses of Scripture, and the 12th verse, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh, for we live after the flesh, ye shall die. If we live after the flesh, then we will die. But what we're talking about is life. But if ye, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. We're talking about a daily living, yeah. living after the things of God, yeah. living after what God's saying, what he's doing to us, what he's doing through us, Daily, we see him being manifested in our lives. Daily, you can reach out to him. I mean, he's there. He's so faithful to us. He's so complete to us in knowing that he is there all the time. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Who do you belong to today? Jesus. We are the sons of God. We yes. belong to him. So we're being led by him, even if we're able to see the manifestation, even if you're not seeing the manifestation today, you're still being led by the Spirit of God. We are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage, again, to, the, to, to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Yes. He yes. is our Heavenly Father. Yes. We cry out to him and we realize that we don't belong to ourselves, but we are belonging to him. He is our Heavenly Father. And some of us maybe have missed uh, not having the Father that you thought you wanted to have in your personal life, but he is your yes. Heavenly Father. You're able to cry out to him. You're able to reach out to him. You're able to find uh, that consolation of knowing that he is there. And we're able to cry out, Abba, Father, our eternal Father, our one that is complete in what he's saying, what he's doing in each one of our lives. He is complete in me. You know, there have been dark areas. There have been areas in our lives that we've had to struggle. And we've wondered if we were on the right track, wondering. But he's always been there. Yes, he has. Even from the very beginning of my life. When I didn't know him as a boy. Did not want to know him as a boy. He was still there. And so bringing us from that place to bringing us where we are now, yes. knowing that he's ever present here yes. in the time of need. Yes. So as I came here with you today to know that God is ever present. Mm -hmm. We've been knowing Glennell since in the early 70s. Yes. She's been so faithful. She's been such a complete person in serving God, living for God, yes. and being up here with you. Yes. So it's been a blessing for us to be here. Yes. Billy's going to come up now and begin to share with you about how God has moved in the last few months in my life, yes. bringing forth a miracle that I'm able to be here with you today. The doctors didn't give me any hope. They didn't think I would be around today, but I am. He's here. Oh. <laughs> Amen. I just want to say to Pastor Glennell, thank you so much for opening your heart and, your, and for you to open your hearts and allow us to come and share with you this morning. She has ministered into my life since I've been here, which is no surprise, I'm sure, to most of you all, because that's what she does. That's who she is. But I want to speak to you today about joy on the journey. Um, I have a little book that I've written, and it's the testimony of our journey this year. But we started our journey in 1970, 
I'm telling you, young, 19 years old, wet behind the ears, thought we knew everything. Nobody could tell us nothing. And we were so smart that when we got married on July the 3rd, that it never dawned on two 19-year-olds that we might need to make a reservation mm -hmm. in Pensacola, Florida on July 3rd because that was July 4th weekend. So we get married and set out and we're on our way to Florida and uh, just so looking forward to our honeymoon and we get there and we couldn't find a hotel, motel anywhere, anywhere, nowhere was there one to be found. 10.30 that night, we finally stopped at this motel and this gentleman told us, uh, he, I, we thought we might have to sleep in our cars. July the 4th, no air conditioning. You know, we thought, oh Lord, we're gonna have to spend the night in our car. What kind of honeymoon is that? <laughs> so this uh, manager of this motel, he felt sorry for us. So he said, you know what? I've got to work all night. I'll just let y'all have my room. And I, we were like, oh yes, thank the uh, Lord. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. So we get our luggage. We start walking to the elevator. He says, oh yes, by the way, Mr. Miss Carol, the air conditioner broke broken in there and I'm like okay so we spent our honeymoon July the 4th in Florida and it you know it was a memory we made but we realized that evening you know we don't know as much as we thought we knew <laughs> we're not smart well let me just tell you this on our 50th anniversary we had planned to go uh, we had several trip plans made but you know what was going on in 2019 the big C and so uh, we had to cancel everything. So we thought, well, what are we going to do in our 50s? So we go, plan to go and visit our uh, past assistant pastor, Brother Gary Northington, and his family in Utah. So we take off and we drive. And uh, we get there. And um, Brother Gary was associate minister. He's passed recently. But he was associate minister at a church there in Beaver, Utah, Pastor Marty Flood. And so we went to the little church, and it was a lot like this church church. Do you know, it is so amazing to me how God chooses to move. And it doesn't matter what size church you have. It can be at a meeting in your home and he decides to move. Yeah. I appreciate that about the Lord. So we went that Sunday morning and Brother Marty Flood shared a word with us and he said, you will receive a miracle in November. So we thought, oh, great, that's uh -huh. awesome. So we go home in that November of 2019, we waited for that miracle and nothing happened. And so then uh, the next year in 2020, November came and rolled around and we didn't think anything about it, but you know, nothing again, nothing happened. So then the uh, November of 2021, something happened. We received that miracle. So I wanna just tell you what, what happened and what transpired. When we got home, uh, celebrating our anniversary last year, <clears throat> 2021, uh, Rod started having some dizzy spells and getting up and saying, well, I feel dizzy, I'm dizzy this morning. So he wasn't due for a checkup until for six more months. And so we decided, well, let's go ahead, let's go to the doctor and let's just see what's happening. So she ran all kinds of tests, found out he was anemic, made an appointment for him to go get to a gastrointestinal doctor and got those tests done there and found out that he had a, a melanoma in his intestine. So he, in 2019, I think it was, had a stage three melanoma removed from the back of his head right here. And in doing so, those cells got into his bloodstream and they metastasized. I'm sure I'm not saying that word right. I'm from Louisiana. You know? <laughs> and it metastasized and it had, he had three lesions in his brain. He had um, six in his lungs and he had some more in other areas of his body. And the doctor told us this is a very, very aggressive cancer. And he said, but we do have, we went to an oncologist and he said the uh, treatment that we're going to put him on, you have a 50-50 chance of it working or helping. And okay, I said, okay, okay, well, we, we choose the 50 part that works. <laughs> you know, you got to make a choice sometime. <clears throat> and so we went to, to see this, this oncologist and this was the report. And then we faced the reality. And the report was that he had cancer, very aggressive cancer. And so uh, we went to this oncologist, I believe he was from India, I'm not sure. But when we went in there, I asked him, I said, could we pray? Do you mind before we start all of this, uh, if we pray together? 
And he took my hand and I thought he was gonna break my fingers. He got really, he squeezed my fingers that hard. But this was what we prayed. Um, let me just see if I can get over here to where that prayer was. <clears throat> oh, I said, Father, activate the knowledge of this young man with the power of the Holy Spirit to bring to us the manifested miracle promised us two years ago in Beaver, Utah. Lord, use him, use this treatment to bring the manifested miracle that we were promised. Mm -hmm. And so that was our prayer. And I mean, I don't know what faith or religion is. he was. It didn't matter to me. I just wanted to pray and I wanted him to pray because I knew the higher power was the one taking hold of this situation. Yeah. And that was Jesus. So we went through, I was telling Pastor, we went through the usual, why us, Lord? We, we've served you all of our lives. We've done and led our lives to be what we thought you wanted to do. Why us? Where did we open the door to the enemy? What happened? So we had to overcome. Now, maybe you have been given a diagnosis in the past and your faith was right there and you didn't have any fear and you felt, you know, and that's great, but we weren't there. We weren't on that level. So we had discouragement. We were depressed. We were fearful. And we were questioning, God, why? God, why? And so we started going through um, these feelings and these emotions. And then I realized, okay, we're going to receive our miracle in November. This was in August when we got the diagnosis. And so I realized, okay, God, I remembered that. The Lord brought, brought that word back that we're going to receive our miracle in November. I said, okay, Lord, we're going to get our miracle in November. We got that word in Beaver, Utah, 2019, two years ago. We're waiting on that miracle. So we met with him, and then we came home, and we just, you know, we just kind of prayed and just started uh, just kind of getting along with the Lord. And y'all... I thought I had faith. I thought I was a woman of faith and of power and, and all of this, but I realized how much I was lacking in all that God wanted me to have. And so I started really, I, I started really seeking God and, and both of us did. And a friend of mine, someone had given me a hundred scriptures on healing. I appreciated that very much. And I still have them and I still use them. But I started saying those scriptures and I wasn't feeling it. I would read those scriptures. I didn't feel a thing. Matter of fact, some days I read them and I felt a little bit mad. Then other days I read them and I felt like I just, I'm not, I don't have any passion when I read. What is going on? God, why don't I feel something? Why should, I should feel something. Now I'm not saying that you've got to feel something when you read faith scriptures. That's where the faith comes in is when you claim the word of God, believe the word of God, you don't feel it. But I wasn't happy with the way I was doing I was doing it by rote. I get the one scripture, I'd read it, I was doing it by rote. And that's not what the Lord had for me. One day I took a missionary friend of mine, uh, Hannah Falk, Egan and Hannah Falk, uh, you may know them, they're missionaries to Tanzania, and we went to lunch together, and I was t t she asked me how I felt. Normally, I would say something positive. I told her, I'm not happy. I'm having problems. And I said, I'm reading these scriptures, one right after the other. And I said, Hannah, I feel like I'm doing it by rote. I just don't want to do it. I don't want to pray these scriptures. I, I have all these emotions going on. She said, she's a very, very humble, very kind lady. And she said, stop it. And I looked at her. She said, stop that. She said, the first scripture you read, he knows you have faith. God knows that you have faith. You need to just rest. Now, remember the word rest. Don't get away from that, okay, because I'm tying something in a little bit later. She said, you need to rest in the Lord. He knows you have faith. And she said, stop, stop that. Don't do that. And you just rest in him. And so that, that when she said that, it like freed my spirit up because I thought I was being really spiritual. You know, I'm going to pray these 101 scriptures, and that's the way things are going to work. So that really released my spirit when she said that. Her words of encouragement was a prelude to a rhema word of God that he was going to speak to me, at, to both of us at a later time. And so her words of encouragement just freed me up. The next Sunday after this, we were having breakfast out on our patio, 
course, we were listening to our faith, our songs. The Lord gave us a couple of songs that we just loved and we held on to. My point is to you that and what is a rhema word? It's a spoken word from God just for you. Yeah. Just for you. Yeah. We don't have to quote 101 scriptures to be able to touch the heart of God. Yeah. All we need is one scripture, oh. one word from him yeah. to take us through. That's all we need. And I'm so, I'm like, Lord, I just felt your presence that Sunday morning. And we had breakfast and we were worshiping and we were sitting out at our table. And he said the blessing. And as soon as he said the blessing, the Holy Spirit said to me, be still and know that I'm God. Now, the Lord knows exactly how we are. He knows our personalities. He put us together. He knows how we are. He, I felt like, and I like to do some decorating. I like to play in interior decorating. That's my hobby. But he gave me a designer word that morning. He has a designer word that he will give each of us when we're going through the valley, when we're going through a trial, when we're going through challenges, when we're going through storms. Let him speak a word to you, a rhema word yes. that's designed just for you. That one scripture set my soul on fire psalms 46 10 and he has used that scripture with us the whole time that we've gone through this be still and know that i'm god that means to trust him trust him go to bed lie down close your eyes go to sleep and trust him because he is working all things together for our good he doesn't need our help when he's trying to work things out in our lives. He is God. And yeah. the Lord just said to me, let me be God. Yeah. Don't try to infringe on my territory and help me work things out. Just let me be God. And so that was our rhema word. And then after that, the angels with skin on, I call them. Some of our friends and some of our uh, family began to just speak words to us. And I want to read this one. In the back of my book, I have power words on the journey, which I wrote these words that people spoke to us because I felt like they could help anybody, not just us. But this was from Pastor Walter Hallam, Abundant Life Christian Center in Lamarck, Texas. He said, Billy and Ronnie, I was praying a couple of days ago, early in the morning, over some of the key people in our life, and you and Ronnie were on my mind. I prophesy this over you as you press for the victory in battle 2021. Our war, that's, that Sunday morning the Lord spoke to me. I looked at Ronnie. I said, this is war. Yeah. This is war. Depression has to go. Discouragement has to go. Why me, Lord, syndrome has to go. This is war. Right. And we're going to pack our arsenal and get our arsenal ready for this because the victory belongs to us. The victory is already ours. God has already made a plan. God has already gone before us. So we are in a battle. We will not cringe from this. We will not draw back, but we will face it head on. So Pastor Walter, he said, 2021 is still the year of your breakthrough. And he had no knowledge of the previous prophetic word that we had had in 2019 that we would receive a miracle in November. He said, 2021 is still, still the year of your breakthrough. Your head never lacks oil. Your life shall continue to move in the overflow of his abundance and mercy and miracles. You will never lack in God's portions. Your steps will be directed by the Holy Spirit. Your decisions are led by the spirit of wisdom and all of God's promises shall manifest in your life in 2021. Good news upon good news shall overtake your journey from all sides. Whatsoever you put your hand to in faith shall overwhelm any attack of lack. What the enemy meant to harm you with in what the enemy meant to harm you with in 2020, he has found no place of planting. Your harvest precedes the enemy's seeds of destruction. Expect the heavy presence of God today. He has done great things already in your life, and what God does next will always be greater than what he did last. 
You will reap in the fields of favor like Ruth. Boaz's life and purpose was brought forth and expanded in history because of that same field. Cindy and I stand in faith and prayer with you and Ronnie and declare that healing and recovery belong to you. There was a confirmation here of the word that we got in 2019. God is still on the throne. No matter what your diagnosis is, no matter what your family is going through, no matter how your children are acting, God is the God of miracles. He is the God of breakthrough, and he wants to break through in your life just as well as he did ours. So all of these angels with skin on my column, Rebecca was one of them. We had so many people encouraging us, Pastor Glennell, so many people encouraging us. And so <clears throat> September 17th, he had his first radiation treatment, and he had five immunotherapy treatments. They begin in August, really, until the 1st of November, last I think week in October, he had his last one. The first few did fine, he did fine. The last two hit him kind of hard. And so we started experiencing some things from that. If you've ever been through chemo chemotherapy, you understand. Well, on August the 8th, he was outside, he was mowing up leaves in the front yard. And I looked out the window and I saw him slumped over the lawnmower. And he was just kind of looked like in a trance. So I went out there. Got him. We went to the doctor's office. His blood pressure was 70 over 40. So they immediately put him in the hospital. By that evening, he was in a semi-coma, semi-conscious. And so he had had a stroke on top of everything else going on in our lives. He had had a, a, a small stroke of the cerebellum area. And I'm like, really? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Is this going on in our lives right now? You know, uh, and so we dealt with that. Well, I wanna, I'm trying to condense this to where I'm not going to be going too long. But anyway, to make a long story short, he was in the hospital for eight days. Four of those days, he was semi-conscious. He was restrained to the bed with restraints. He didn't know he was in the world, talking out of his head. And uh, we had four different doctors come in and say, Miss Carol, Mr. Carroll is not doing well. He's declining rapidly, rapidly declining. And so he, four of them told us, you need to go and go ahead and go to her hospice and get ready to put him in hospice. And so, you know, that, that hit me kind of hard. Uh, on Thursday night, I believe it was Thursday night, the 8th, no, that's the 12th. Uh, I went home and uh, first of all, let me back up a bit. That evening when the doctors came in and told us we needed to take him to hospice, my sons and myself, we went that day and we toured hospice, the one that they wanted us to go to. I walked and stepped my foot at the door and the Holy Spirit said, this is not my will. This is not my will concerning Ron. This is not my will. And I'm like, well, then what is your will, Lord? I'm, what is your will? And the Lord spoke to my heart and he said, did you just worship me? Did you just thank me? Did you just praise me? Because I'm working all things together. You need to be still, Billy. Be still and know that I'm God. I'm working this out. That night I went home uh, from Turin Hospice. That afternoon, I'm sorry, I went back to the hospital. And so the boys had left. It was about 8 o'clock at night. And so the boys had left, and I was, I'm sorry, I was devastated. You know, I, I didn't i didn't know what I was going to do. This man's a pretty good-sized man. Uh, he was strapped to the bed. He couldn't do anything for himself. I'm five foot two, and I'm saying, God, what am I going to do? I just made a point. I'm five foot two. God, what are you going to do? <laughs> and so I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do, Lord. There again, the Lord said, be still. Know that I'm God. Be still. Friends called us, wanted to come over uh, and visit, and he's a singer and a musician. And uh, he said, uh, they came in, he went to the piano, and we started worshiping. My heart, y'all. I can't describe. My heart was broken. And I thought, God, what am I going to do? So we stayed there in my music room. We started singing. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will sing how great. How great is our God. Amen. Tears flowing. How great is our God. 
Now that is the very moment that I know God turned things around in 24 hours time. Let me tell you, this is the miracle. Now God worked with the medication and the chemo and all. God worked with that to bring about a healing and remission. But this is the miracle that I'm talking about, the joy on the journey. I went to sleep that night. I got up the next morning. And I went back to the hospital and I was going to tell him, no, he's not going to hospice. I'm going to bring him home with home health. We'll, we'll work it out. We'll figure it out. Y'all, I walked in that hospital. I opened the door to his room. He is sitting up in the bed, eating breakfast. <laughs> Tears rolling down his face. <laughs> Give the Lord a hand clap. He just goes, oh, and, he, and he looks at me and he says, what happened? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean, what happened? <laughs> you know, so I began telling him what happened, you know. That uh, Monday, he was supposed to stay in the hospital four more days. Um, now, while he was in the hospital, he couldn't talk. His tongue was thick. He had had a stroke. I mean, you know, all of this, all these symptoms, impossible looking things. But you know, nothing is impossible with yes. our God. Amen. Whatever you're facing this morning, nothing Amen. is impossible Amen. with our God. And so yes. two days later, they released him and they, they said, well, we're going to send him home and we'll send a home health nurse out. And I said, okay. So we went home and he was still slurring his words. Well, y'all, I Googled. <laughs> Thank you, God, for Google. I Googled how to work with someone who was having speech problems and found out the exercises for that. And we started, sat down for two days and worked on his speech. The third day, he got up. His speech was just as clear as mine. God did another miracle. God did another miracle. The home health nurse came home, came to our home that Monday night, and she brought a little bag of comfort drugs. And so we sat down and she was in the most precious voice and way trying to explain to me how to give him morphine whenever this got bad because if he would get worse, you know, with this type of cancer. And how for me to give a little shot of morphine and I'm looking at this and I'm like, dear Lord have mercy. I'm not a nurse. I don't know how I can do this. Anyway, I sat and listened to her and then I don't really remember doing this, but my sister-in-law was there. But I opened the bag up and I started one by one picking the drugs back up and putting them in the in the sack. Now I'm not saying that's what you need to do, because sometimes I know at the end of life, people's lives, you have to do what you have to do, and I would do it if I needed to. But I knew the Lord spoke to me to put those back in there. Well, she took us. She said, you don't want to keep these? I said, no, I think we're going to be okay. And I said, I'll just call you if I think I need them and let you know when you come back. And so two days later, the nurse came out. She said, Mr. Carroll, you're doing so well. I'm just going to quit coming out here. I don't think I, I don't need you. are doing better than I am. Give <laughs> God the glory. God the glory. Hallelujah. So I thank God for all those miracles. Now, let me just tell you this. My brother and sister were here, and uh, when he came home, and the day we went back to get the PET scan results, he had gone in, got the PET scan to see if the immunotherapy worked, if it helped him. So uh, we went back. My brother and sister-in-law were here, and we had a Holy Ghost prayer meeting before we went. And uh, there again, God did the work. So we go, we get the PET scan results. We are in, now our doctor, our intern doctor is a Holy Ghost, spirit-led, spirit-filled woman of God who has a strong discernment, strong discernment. She's walked us through all kinds of stuff. Well, we're sitting there and of course, um, you know, we're waiting and we're nervous. I mean, we're human. We're not, we were nervous waiting on that report. Of course, we believe the report of the Lord, but when it's you sitting there, it's a different story. Yeah. And so she walks in and she's smiling and she's waving that report. Ron, hand me that folder, please. That's got the report in it. I wanted to read it right there, that manila folder right by your foot on the floor right there. She read that. She just smiled. And so we just started worshiping and praising God when she entered the door before we even knew what the report was or what the report said. So I wanted to just right quickly tell you this report. And she said, here it is. Here it is right here. She comes in like this and she's like, 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, <laughs> bless the Lord, you know. Overall, findings are felt most compatible with no metabolic, metabolically active disease. Complete metabolic response. That means he responded to the treatment. The sub, y'all, excuse me, these words. Um, the subcutaneous nodule in the left neck in the region of level 2A is no longer measurable. It had shrank to where it wasn't there. Right upper low pulmonary nodules are decreased in size and no metabolically active pulmonary nodule or mass is evident. However, let's see. Seg uh, let's see, the segment of the left upper lobe is considerably decreased in size, now measuring at one millimeter with no blood flow, dead. <laughs> so all, then he went to the uh, radiologist. I forgot to tell y'all he had to have um, radiology on September 17th of his brain for those tumors. And so he got, went through that as well. But we went for the second MRI after nodules gone, nodules dead, Le lesions, no blood flow, tumors, tumors decreased, not there. It was just not there. He showed us the x-ray. He said, do you see where they were? And we said, yes, sir. He said, do you see where they are now? And we looked and he said, there's no tumors there. So thank God. Give the Lord a praise. <laughs> he deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. So we went home and we went rejoicing. him. And so uh, then we... Uh, after that, we had a Holy Ghost visitation and worship, and and we just had a talk with Jesus. We just uh, constantly just talking to Him and walking with Him and Him with us. So um, I wanted to read as my conclusion, and then I want you, I want, um, Lou, is it possible for y'all to sing that worship song, Holy Song again at the end here while we minister to people? Can we do that? Okay, I want to read this to you right quickly. Um, okay, I want to bring this to a conclusion that God is faithful, God is good. He's no respecter of person. What he did for Pastor Glenell, he'll do for you. What he's done for Brother Danny, Brother Danny, the enemy's tried to take his life twice. He had a stroke a uh, year or so ago, maybe four years ago, the enemy tried to take his life. He just recently collapsed, and they thought that he was. Uh, he thought they thought he was passing away, and so when he clapped, uh, my friend Rebecca went over and she said, "Danny, are you dying?" He said, "Not today." <laughs> <laughs> do you know what a Do you know what a first responder does? The first responder, when they get to the scene, can save lives because of what they do. When we are a Christian and these things happen to us, Brother Danny, and we respond with, no, not today. I'm not going anywhere today. That saves our lives. That's the fruit of your lips is the, your reward. The fruit of your lips is your reward. Yeah. Yeah. I want to back up one second. I have one more thing I want to tell you that I left out I forgot. That day we went to hospice. And I came home, came back to the um hospital room. Everybody was gone. We were there about 8 o'clock. He was in a semi-coma, strapped to the bed. You know, uh, all the above the noise in the world. I was very devastated and, and, and crying. And then all of a sudden, y'all, he walked in. Jesus walked in that room. And I can't tell you what I felt. The depression went out of the window. The discouragement went out. All the fear went out. And the Holy Ghost came in that room. And I'm going to tell y'all something. He came upon me. And I walked up, got up. It was just us in there. And I pointed my finger at him. I said, you will rise up out of this bed. You will come home. You will walk out with me to the pier. We'll drink yes, coffee, Lord. hold hands, and watch the sunset. And I said it about three times so I really felt it like I'm feeling it right now. I knew God was going to bring the restoration in him. I didn't see it, but I knew God was working. I didn't feel it, but I knew God was working. I was If I had looked at the circumstances and the way he looked right there, I would have never have believed that. But I knew God walked in the room. And let me tell you something, when he walks in the room, it's all over but the shout. <laughs> Walk into your circumstance today. Amen. God wants.
wants to set you free today. God wants to answer your prayer today. Let me read this, and as we get up and get going here, um, no, we are not the same as we were when we started this journey. He and I are not the same. Our faith has increased. Our trust in God has increased. I'm learning how to be still and know that he's God. By the grace and the mercy of God, we're better. Listen, God doesn't put these things on us. It's Satan that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But when these times in our lives come, God will take hold of that. He will turn it around and he'll use it for good. He will bring glory into our situation. Yeah. We've grown closer to God, to each other. We appreciate our friends and family more than we ever have. We can honestly say we found joy on this journey. Amen. <laughs> you can find joy on your journey. Now we're ready for God to take us on new paths. No, things were... Listen, we're not look, looking for things to be the way they were before. No. We're not looking for that because they're not going to be the way they were before. Right. They're going to be better. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to be better. Yeah. Let me just say, as we end this, it ain't over until he says it's over. Yeah. It ain't over in your marriage. It ain't over with your children. It's not over in your finances. It's not over in your body, in your health. It's not over till God says it's over. Yes. You will rise up out of this, and you will do exploits for the Lord in these last days. So, uh, Miss Lou, I want you to come up and uh, sing that song some more. And as she sings, I want you to come up. If you need anything in your body, if you need anything in your life, if you need healing, if you need a touch from God, if you need financial help, if you need uh, if you need anything, come up and let the Lord uh, just speak to you today and bring a miracle in your life. I too, more than anything, Ron and I want you to find joy on your journey. Yeah. It's not over. It's not over. God wants to give you joy in this life and peace and hope. God bless you. And come on up if you want prayer.